Cade Cunningham has been playing some really good basketball as of late, except for last game, he sucked. But overall, he's been hooping. <laughs> this is a man who was subjected to a lot of slander mm -hmm. for the Pistons' struggles. I would say mostly wrongfully so. And I think we're now at an interesting place, Logan, where we can have a conversation between him and the number one pick the year after him, Paolo Boncaro. Who would you rather build around between those two? It's a really tough question, Carson. I think yeah. I'm going to go with Cade. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is I just think there's a different level of, you know, easy offense that Cade is going to create for me versus Paolo. And I do think Paolo mm -hmm. has other advantages. Like, uh, in terms of being able to shoot over, you know, the majority of the league, being 6'10", being able to be this agile of an athlete and to create jumpers. Like, when Paolo's on, he looks Tatum smooth. You know, he looks Tatum light almost with his size and how easy he gets into his shots. He's really strong. He's really physical. Uh, he can get to the rim at will. But, and, you know, I think he's, I think he can take on bigger defensive matchups. He's a better rebounder, mm -hmm. right? Like, Paolo has all of these advantages. But to me, Cade is just in more of that, you know, I think Cade's just in more of that star guard role that I can buy into that's going to be successful in a playoff run. And I, I know that that's... Uh, Kind of a hot take. It's like me defending the Chiefs this entire time. I also want to redact sure. that statement. Man, I don't believe in the Bills more than the Chiefs. I was on one last episode, man. That's wow. Just a... Redaction. Official it, redaction. Dude, it's just a. It's just the wrong take. I literally. I walked Bro around. Sat my... in bed at night and he thought about yes. that one. Yes, dude. I sat up at night and I went. I don't actually believe that statement whatsoever. Uh, I want to redact that on this pod. Chiefs touchdown. Redacted. Touchdown Redacted. Chiefs. Cade, I, I just. You know, it's it's like me taking up for the Chiefs. I just think with this bad run from the Pistons, a lot of people want to attribute, like, the star quarterback and teams going on a losing streak. Oh, Justin yeah. Herbert sucks. He's not a top-five quarterback. Oh, Cade Cunningham just lost all these games. It's always important to contextualize that these are team sports. And for people that are really high on Paolo, maybe this is justification that he's the better prospect because the Magic are on a run. Well, the Magic are just much better constructed top to bottom around Paolo. They have better basketball players. Jalen Suggs, Cole Anthony, Franz Wagner, Wendell Carter Jr. The Pistons don't. Uh, I think that this is kind of the trial and tribulation of Cade. I think this is the season from hell that is going to mold him into the player mm -hmm. that he is for the future, where you got to lose a bunch of games and you got to grow your craft and you got to eat crow for a while before you start winning games. But I think this push through the fire is going to get Cade to where he needs to be where he is elite creating as a mid-range shooter out of pick and roll. Like, Cade has his own limitations, Carson, and you've harked on them in the past. He's not a great athlete, right? He's never mm -hmm. going to be able to get to the rim at will and create crazy offense like that. But he's a genius passer. He processes the game exceptionally well. He's got great feel and change of pace. And I think he's going to be one of the deadliest mid-range and intermediate shot creators in the NBA one day, combined with an elite playmaker. So I think... Top 10 point guard status is where I envision Cade reaching one day with plus sure. defense too. And yeah, potentially higher. The only reason I say top 10 is there is so much yeah. great guard talent in the league today. For him to climb into that upper echelon, he's going to have to be truly elite. I just think that archetype is a little more valuable than Paolo. And I don't know if I can trust Paolo to concretely lead out great offenses. I think Cade is going to consistently lead out great offenses one day. And I don't know if Paolo does. I think Paolo has a more well-rounded game, but I would rather take that top-notch offensive creation than a well-rounded superstar. It's tough. It's tough. I would take mm -hmm. both of these guys as building blocks. I want to be clear about that. If I could have either of these guys as my franchise cornerstone, I'd be happy, but I just slightly prefer Cade. It's very, very close for me as well. And I look back to when we did our top 10 guys, 25 and under to build around this offseason. I had Paolo one spot above Cade then. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to stick with that now. And it's interesting to me that you said off the top that you feel like Cade gives you more easy offense because that's where I have to disagree. I think that the easiest way to generate quote unquote easy offense is by having overwhelming physical advantages. That is something that Paolo has. Mm -hmm. That is something that Cade does not. Cade has to grind for a lot of his buckets. He is very reliant on difficult shot making. You just don't really see dudes like Paolo who are that size, 6'10", 250, that athletic, where you're talking about real high-end first step, but also strong, also bouncy around the rim, who can handle, who can shoot, even if it's inconsistent, you certainly see the flashes and the improvement, 
who can play make again some inconsistencies there but damn good for a second year player with those physical attributes that is rare that is very very rare he is a constant mismatch he pretty much can either get by you or go through you regardless of who you are the first step is quick but then he's also got some nice counters some nice ways to create separation in the lane awesome spin move and then he does have those physical tools finishing around the rim in traffic just creates a bunch of rim pressure and i've always said that i think he's very versatile in terms of his uses he mm -hmm. is sort of this wing big hybrid he can bully mismatches out of the post but he can also run pick and roll for you i think if they add a really high-end pick-and-roll ball handler, and he's willing to embrace it. We could see him become a mm -hmm. lethal pick-and-roll finisher and pick-and-pop guy. He's awesome in transition. There's just a multitude of uses for a guy with all of his skills and physical tools. He has improved as a shooter as well. He was under 30% from deep last year. He's 36% deep this year. Still inefficient for mid-range, but I do like the looks that he gets there. I think he does a nice job of using his physicality to create space. He's got good balance, good body control. I think he can be a bit overly reliant on that still, but I think it's going to be a weapon for him down the line. And as a playmaker, for his size, he's got good vision, good instincts. We see it with kickouts, with skip passes, like he's very willing to lean into the drive and kick stuff. Unfortunately, the Magic's shooting still sucks. <laughs> They're 29th and three-point percenters, mm -hmm. so they don't reward him all that much, but he'll create those shots. And then he's got some nice synergy with Goga when he draws help from his man and he can just hit him with those laydowns. he's not crazy accurate as a passer he can telegraph stuff a bit but he's unselfish and he's a second year 610 dude who is averaging almost five assists per game could be averaging a little bit more if he had decent shooting around him and then he does have the two-way tools his defensive effort can come and go i think he can be late on rotations i think he can take bad angles in terms of closeouts but the tools are all there and he is contributing right now to a top three defense in the league. That is uncommon for a second year guy. His shot selection can be bad. It can be frustrating. Right? He's not super efficient, but neither is Cade. Honestly, all of those same things apply to Cade. The only difference is that Cade, you can probably attribute more to actual physical limitations. He can't just get to the rim at will in the same way that Paolo. And when Paolo fully realizes and embraces that, there's a ceiling for him to be all the more dominant offensively so it's the overwhelming athletic advantages and how that leads to easy offense and if he starts really shooting at a really high mm -hmm. clip where he's already progressing and again he is fluid there he's a nice shot creator he can hit his step backs and his turnarounds and all that and if he becomes really sharp playmaking where he's already embracing the ball handling and taking on those responsibilities good lord i mean mm -hmm. that is just like a dude with really rare traits and people like to hint at these LeBron comparisons with Paolo, but they never say it outright. Have you seen that on Twitter? No. There will be like some Paolo dunk, and people are like, we all know who that looked like, but I'm not going to say it. I saw somebody tweet out recently like, Paolo could be averaging 23.77, which he's not, and he couldn't really be, but as a second-year <laughs> guy. And then we all know who that sounds like. It's like, settle down, okay? just calm down a little bit but he does have that special blend of elite athleticism yeah. and offensive skill and the playmaking chops Cade is hooping as of late though i mean his last eight games he's 28 points and eight assists per game on 52 40 84 splits i just love that he is knocking down his jumpers at an elite clip because that's always been the thing with him it's the pull-up shooting at his size and he struggled to shoot as a rookie. A lot of guys do. He struggled to shoot in the limited sample size last year, and he was struggling to shoot early this year, and that is partly due to shot diet and terrible spacing, but I always felt like he could shoot better than he was, mm -hmm. and now he is knocking him down, and then he's using his size, and he's using the fact that he plays with great pace, and he isn't sped up, and he can change gears to get to his spots, and he is playmaking really well. I did a whole video about Kate earlier this year. I love the guy, and when he cares, he has a high two-way ceiling. Mm -hmm hasn't really tapped into it this year but i believe that the tools are there i think that we've seen it on film when he is engaged he's got really good length he moves his feet really well he's strong for a wing and a guard so i think he's probably better built to singularly carry an offense just because he is in that archetype of that ball dominant guard who can run 15 pick and rolls a game for you and is gonna make the right decision right like he will hit the roller he will kick out to a shooter he can consistently make the right reads in those situations but i think that paolo 
probably pairs more easily with another really good player who needs yeah. the ball because he can be that off-ball play finisher because he can attack you in so many different ways. I think that and the other things that I talk about make me slightly prefer him. But if you're slandering Cade because the Pistons suck, that is just misplaced criticism. He has been their shining light. He has been really, really good. And I still deeply believe in him as a future star guard. And that's a big component of it for me, Carson, is the magic, uh, I don't know, just kind of in late game scenarios. And like you said, if you get another guard for Paolo where he doesn't have to take on that role, uh, it will be better. And Paolo's impact, just point blank, is more multifaceted than Cade. Mm -hmm. You hit on the key thing for me with Paolo, though, and I guess why I'm not, I I won't say skeptical because I do expect him to improve. If Paolo can get to like a 39% or above clip from behind the arc, or Mm -hmm. if he can get to like 45% out of the mid-range, because like you said, Paolo is still really damn, a really damn fluid athlete for a guy his size. And that's why I make the Tatum comparison. If Paolo starts consistently knocking down that jumper, I I think I'd have to change my mind. That's the only difference for me right now is that... the, old, the, the playmaking and the shooting edge. Just because I think Cade, like I said, is going to create more seamless, easy offense. But if if Paolo reaches that, man, you're looking at a guy that has all of those physical traits, that has some playmaking chops, but is also going to have an unblockable perimeter jump shot, which just makes him a really complete player. That's the one thing that I want to see before I can, you know, really say that I'd take Paolo. Here's what I'll say about you making the Tatum comparisons. Paolo at just barely 21, has two inches on Jason Tatum today, and he has 40 pounds on Jason Tatum today. Like, that's what I want to emphasize. 40? Paolo is a freight train, bro. 40? 40 pounds, at least on how How they're listed. How much does Tatum weigh? They have him listed at 210, which seems a little bit Oh, I'm saying, nah, Tatum's for sure 235, 240. That's a big yeah, boy. Yeah, I'm probably closer to that, but they don't generally sell dudes that well, short. Well, yeah, especially man. Especially when the whole thing is he added strength this offseason and all that. But I agree. 210 definitely seems slight. But whatever. He's bigger. I mean, he's just the bigger, more athletic yeah. guy long term. And so in terms of just that pure physical imposition, he certainly has more upside. It's a rare archetype that Paolo is in right now. It's very, very exciting. But I do love both of these guys.